Okay, this video is how to predict your health future. So it's not just how long you live, but it's how healthy you are as you live, how well you live. And so we're gonna talk about the concept here of health span. And so what that means is you could have two people that both make it to 75 years of age, but one of them was thriving up until the last year or so versus the other one was deteriorating long before that. So you want really to kind of live as long as you can and then sort of like fall off a cliff at the end and uh, just have a very brief phase of sickness, deterioration, and dying. Um, so here's basic life curves. The way this graph is set up, here's the age, you know, all the way from 10 to 100. E even if you do everything right, you're probably going to die on average at about 95 years of age. Okay, and that would be really living about as well as a person could. We just seem to run out about that time currently. Um, if you eat a Mediterranean diet, Mediterranean diet or some version of it is, is what like most doctors do. So doctors are a little bit healthier than the average population, but not much because they really don't know much about nutrition, epidemiology, and toxicology. Those are the three most important subjects in health. Okay, so they'll probably end up at about 75 and they're, and they're often not doing so well by the time they're 55. A lot of doctors are mentally, physically slowing down. They're fat. They, they just don't got the smarts anymore by about 55 years of age. Now, there's plenty that do better than that. And you can keep working when your health is so-so. Um, let's just take a look at the vegan curve, though, just for perspective. <clears throat> the vegans are going to age better, even from an early age. They're less likely to be obese and fat. They're less likely to have, you know, uh, bad acne and whatnot. They're just better looking. They got more vitality about them. And when I say vegan, I mean low-fat vegan, you know, of health foods. Not junk food, not potato chips, not vegan potato chips. You know, plant foods, whole food, plant-based diet, low-fat, no oils. Okay, that's been shown to markedly reduce the risk of having acne. All right. Um, but, you know, you can have people that are quite healthy, even with a relatively lousy d diet. You know, I played sports when I was young, college age, and there were a lot of good athletes who didn't eat that good of a diet. They don't tend to age as well, though. The average American eats some version of a sad diet. And I see a lot of these women, you know, lower middle class women, um, who really sort of lose their looks between the ages of about you know, 35, 30, 35 to 45. If they smoke, they lose their looks much more rapidly. Um, and a typical sad diet eater, you see this a lot with construction worker guys and stuff. Their hands are all beat up from degenerative joint disease, arthritis, they're fat, they're going for cardiac cath and open heart surgery in their, you know, late 40s, early 50s. They're hypertensive on a bunch of pills. They're often impotent uh, by their 40s. Okay, and I know a lot of doctors. I've had a lot of doctors asking about um, uh, Viagra in their late 30s, early 40s. So, you know, the Mediterranean diet is better than the SAD diet, but it's often just an excuse to continue eating meat and fish, food with oils in it, drinking a couple beers or other forms of alcohol every day. So it's, it's a pretty mediocre way to go, and it just sort of pretends to be healthy. You know, the average person who doesn't know anything, like a typical doctor, will say, oh, Mediterranean diet because they think that's the quick way to sound intelligent, but what it really indicates is that they're ignoramuses. Okay, so basically with the Mediterranean diet, instead of you know dying about 65, let's say you die a little bit before, I'd say early 70s would be pretty typical. Now with the vegan, you get a lot more time, plus you know the vegan's not hitting the so-so curve until in the ballpark, you know, pretty old. And you can think about it, look at some of the, the better known vegans, you know, Caldwell Esselstyn's about 90, 91 years old, I would guess. And he's still going strong, giving lectures, traveling all over the place. Uh, T. Colin Campbell's about 90 years, still going strong. These guys are out running and, and you know, real healthy and active. Um, Ruth Heydrich, you know, the famous survivor of metastatic cancer. She was, um, you know, still running in her 80s. You know, she's running marathons and triathlons. She's now about 88 years of age, I would guess. Um... It's very common, you know. And then you look at McDougal. Okay, McDougal's about, I think, 76 years of age. And some people say he looks so skinny. You know, the guy had a stroke when he was a teenager and had hemiplegia. Okay, to me, what I notice as the most important thing for aging is look at his brain. McDougal's still super smart. And that's the most important thing for aging. I see tons and tons of Americans that are real cognitively slow by their mid-50s 
And, you know, I've had, like I said, I got internal medicine friends and my personal experience reflects this. The vast majority of patients, almost all of them that I see over 60 years of age, are significantly cognitively slow, kind of cow-like. Hi, yes, thank you, sure, sure, yes. They, they just don't have vitality or zip about them anymore. You know, they're mentally with it. They can, you know, f drive their car home and maybe to the grocery store. But, you know, they don't, they don't have any sort of like capacity for nuanced thought whatsoever. Um, and that's part of why they're so pathetic and hopeless is because when you've lost that intellectual vitality and curiosity, the ability to study a subject and learn it and turn things around to get your health back, it's over. I mean, they never get better. I mean, that's one of the big jokes of conventional medicine is the patients never get better, you know. McDougal had a funny meme about a fat guy with a bag of pills, and a couple of years later, he's still a fat guy with a bag of pills, and now there's one or two more pills each couple of years. Um, and that is my experience with the typical patient. That's how it is in all the Western hospitals. Um, and then, you know, the Mediterranean diet, like I said, there's some variations on it. More keto-like, whatever, but it's still a big joke. Okay, so anyways, this was the point of the life curves, and this is obviously the best one because, you know, you're going to keep your Johnson working for a long, long time. Uh, you know, Eddie Murphy used to say when he was a kid, he was so poor, if he wasn't a boy, he'd have nothing to play with. And so what I'm saying is it's nice to keep the Johnson work and it's nice to have some physical strength. It's nice to have intellectual vitality. You can enjoy books and pleasant and conversation and all these other things. These sad patients, man, they're all, they're pretty screwed. I've seen tons of dementia in late 40s, early 50s from hypertensive strokes. And they also get the whole you know, neurovascular uncoupling degeneration. We're not going to get into all that right now, but this is this is um, this is what it's all about. This is a pretty accurate, you know, summary, summary as detailed as I can get in uh, one quick drawing. Okay, I've shown you this before. This is like you know a map at a museum. You are here, okay, and you're either going to you know pick the avoid toxins, go vegan, and keep things working and have a good chance to make it all the way out to 90, or you go to the typical chump, you know goes to the doctor, thinks it's a doctor's job to take care of their health. Doctor puts them on pill after pill, mass yield to the pill, send a bill, and then the pills don't work, so they end up going for surgeries, getting their organs you know, chopped out, chop out the gallbladder, chop out the appendix, <laughs> chop out a joint. All right, and, you know, it's bye-bye money. They're real poor, they, go, they get bankrupt and they die prematurely. Okay, now here's like the typical blue collar guy I see in his 40s, early 50s got a big fat belly, he calls it a beer belly, but in reality he looks like a pregnant female. He's got moobs, man boobs. Um, you know, it's, it's not good. He doesn't understand how sick he is and how estrogen overloaded he is. And you know, here's the typical pattern. The <clears throat> Tarahumata and the Pima, you know, were from the northern Mexico area. The Tarahumata still live in Copper Canyon, you know, Sierra Madre Mountains. And they're still, you know, world famous for being ultra marathoners. Uh, versus the Pima, with all their high-fat diet, sad diet, they were absorbed in Arizona after the Mexican-American War in 1848. This is and this is a pretty typical American, you know, open heart surgery, cabbage, coronary artery bypass graft, gallbladder surgery, right upper quadrant scar, appendicitis, right lower quadrant scar, sigmoidectomy for diverticulitis, left lower quadrant scar. They start out with toe amputations, then they get a transmitotarsal foot amputation, typical diabetic. Then they end up with a below the knee amputation, a BKA, and then an above the uh, knee amputation, and they're, they're usually dead by heart disease by the time that all occurs, and kidney failure as well uh, progressively makes things worse for them. When they go into kidney failure too, that accelerates the coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis. Tons of women have thyroid problems, thyroidectomies, you know, autoimmune disease, leaky gut stuff, all from sad diet and all the toxins are exposed to. Okay, here's just a little more detail on the slide. I also would say, besides avoid toxins, it's going to be a bigger and bigger thing to learn about avoiding EMF. Okay, and then, you know, what are the other things of health? All this stuff, I call this God's way of healing. You know, man's way of healing is drug the crap out of yourself, <laughs> suffer terribly, get ripped off, get tortured with all these surgeries, you know, physical pain and suffering. Um, and versus, you know, these are God's way. They're all free. And they, they work pretty well almost always. Not always, but almost always. Um, your sunshine for vitamin D improves your immune system function. Exercise improves immune system function, makes you better looking, make, improves your self-esteem, makes you happier. When you exercise more, then you sleep better. 
you do things to help each other. You get to release all these reward neurotransmitters in your brain. It makes you happy. Helps you as much as it helps them. Um, maintaining some type of positive social support system. Religion. Religious people are a lot healthier. So, you know, popular culture likes to mock religion because it wants to put the population into slavery and people are too stupid to realize that. But the reality is religious people are a lot healthier and they behave better. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're not perfect. Some of them are a pain in the ass. But overall, they're much better off. Okay, so anyways, I call that God's way. It's free and it works versus man's way. is expensive and it doesn't work. Oops, well, that's all I'm going to show for this. So anyways, uh, I hope that was helpful.